Welcome to the Landscape Lighting Software Tutorial Movies. These movies are going to walk you through the process from opening an image to creating your lighting effects and saving and printing your pictures. So first of all, you'll notice that when you open up the program, like it said in the overview movies, many of the icons are grayed out. Do not be alarmed. That's because there's nothing to save, nothing to print, and nothing to draw on. So these icons are grayed out. So the first thing you want to do is open up the picture that you saved onto your hard drive or if you know how to navigate to your digital camera. So to open an image, all you have to do is go to this icon here, which is the open icon, and click on it. Then you want to navigate to the folder where you have saved your images. Now, it could be still on your camera. It could be in your My Documents, My Pictures, your desktop. It doesn't really matter. You just need to know where it is and how to navigate to it. So I have the pictures that you may want to follow along with under the folder called Samples. So we'll double click on that folder and you'll notice that it looks like there are no images in that folder. That's because my files of type is set to BMP and the images I'm looking for are JPEGs. So this may happen to you, there's a good chance. If you click on uh, this pull down menu here and click on JPEG, now you're going to see the JPEG images in this folder. So to open up an image, all you have to do is click on it and then click open or double click the image. Now you'll notice that this image is very large and it more than fills up the screen so that you can't view the whole image at one time without zooming out in the program. Now you can do that, but larger images take up more memory in your computer because the program has to refresh it or bring it back if you make a mistake and hit undo. So it takes up more RAM. The more programs you have opened as you're doing the imaging, the more RAM that's taken up by your computer. So the bottom line is you should always size down your image to around 1200 pixels. You don't need much more than that to send it to someone so that they can print it out on an inkjet printer. It still looks very good. So to size down the image, you go over here to File, click on Background Image, and click on Resize. Right here where it says Width, just simply type in 1200. You don't need to put anything in the height when you have maintain aspect ratio checked there. So click OK and the image will be sized down. Now that the image is sized down, you could pretty much see the whole image, at least in the width, and you could just slide up and down to see the whole picture. We're not going to really be interested in doing anything up here on the roof, so I'm going to slide it down to the bottom so I could see the ground. And this is where I'm going to place in lights. Now before we continue, I want to pause for a second to explain something to you. First of all, the landscape lighting software is actually composed of two separate programs. There is the landscape lighting software, which is the program we're working in right now, and there is the landscape lighting effects, which is this program here. It has different icons and this is actually where you would do your lighting effects. So in the first program, we're just going to be touching up the photo, sizing it down, light and darkening the photo, and putting in the fixtures. Then we would bring that file into the lighting effects program. And I'm going to show you how to do that, but I wanted to make sure that you understood I'm not going to do the lighting effects in this program. Now the imaging program has a lot of manipulation tools that the lighting effects program does not have. And one of those would be the ability to lighten up this image. You notice that it's kind of dark over here in this image, probably because it's on the north side of the house, but you can see it's really bright outside, but this part is all in the shade. You may want to lighten this up before you do your lighting effects so it gives it more of a brighter um, illumination for the lights. You'll see what I mean here in a second. So all you need to do to lighten the picture up is go up here to Tools and click on Color Levels. You'll see that you have Contrast, Intensity, and Gamma. If you take this slider and slide it to the right, you can see how I'm making this picture brighter. Sliding it over to the left from center makes it darker. So we want to brighten it up just a little bit. We can even put a little of intensity on it. That might be too bright, but let's check it out. To see what it looks like on the image, you simply click OK, and you can see that the image is brightened up. 
maybe a little too much. So let's undo that by clicking Edit, Undo. You'll go back to the original photo. And let's try it again. Again, we'll go into Tools, Color Levels, and we're just going to do the contrast this time to bring it up a bit. Click OK. And I like that. So now I've brightened the image. Another thing you might want to do with the imaging program is to clean up the picture. Now, I must face it, this picture is pretty darn clean. Maybe you would want to take out the children out of this picture, but that is a little more complicated thing for a tutorial. But what I'm going to do is just take out this light. Let's say we don't want that light in the photo. We want to put our own light in there. So what you want to do is you've got to cover something up with something in the picture that you're going to take out. For example, if I want this light out, I have to use the siding that's in the picture to cover it up. So I'm going to grab a piece of siding by going here to the Define Area Tools. I'm going to get a rectangle. and I'm going to grab a section of siding big enough to cover up this whole lit up area here. So I'll click OK. Now to convert this into an object, I simply click and drag it. It'll ask me if I want to convert it to an object. Say yes and now I just move the siding up here. Now you see it's pretty much covered up that light, but the siding is kind of going off at the wrong angle here because I actually pulled it from the bottom. The perspective would be different. You can adjust that by going to the warp tool, click on vertical so that the um, side handles are attached, and for more information on the warp tool, make sure you watch that training movie. And I'm gonna bring this down a little bit here and bring this down just enough so that these slats are going about the same way as the other ones below it. So we'll click OK, click off of it. Looks pretty good, but you can see this is a bit darker than the piece below because it had a light on it. It would be lighter. So let's click on this area here. I want to lighten it up. Again, I'll go to Tools, Color Levels, and just add a little bit of contrast to it. Click OK and you can see it's lighted up. It's a pretty close match there. So that's all you have to do to remove something by using the Define Area tool. You can also remove things by using the Clone tool. Now the Clone tool does work a bit like grabbing a piece of this siding here to cover up something. Again, you always have to use something in the image to cover up something in the image. So I'm going to remove this plant here because it's going to require a combination of grabbing these bricks here and using the clone tool. So let's zoom in by pressing F10 on the keyboard. If you hold your cursor over the plant and press F10, it zooms in where you want it to. Now I'm going to grab a piece of brick here. So I'll go into the drawing tools and I'm going to grab a section here. So now I want to convert this to an object. I click OK, pick it up and drag it. It says you convert it, yes. Now you'll notice that my uh, this is a running bond pattern, so you do have to keep your bricks kind of lined up here. Otherwise it just really stands out and looks really bad. So I've got the bricks here, so what I'm going to do is I need to trim them off to the edge of the house, so I'll go into the eraser tool and I'm just going to erase part of the bricks here. And now this is where we're going to use the clone tool to fix this section here. So I'll click off of that. I'll click on clone. And the clone tool allows you to change brush sizes. If you click on this down arrow, slide it to the top, makes them smaller. Sliding down to the bottom makes them larger. And you can see they alternate between square and round. I'm going to get a smaller square brush about that size there. So the way the clone tool works is it actually will paint with the texture that you grab from the screen. So I'm going to do an example here. Let's say I want to paint, paint with this tree here out into the road. So I'm going to right click over on the tree and then I left click and I start drawing. I'm actually drawing with this tree in the road. So you can see it picks up something from one place and draws it in another. We don't want that, so we're going to click Undo to get rid of it. So what I want to do is to draw with the brick just to cover up this little bit of plant here. So I'm going to right click right here on the brick, and then I'm going to left click, and then left click again. And as you can see, I drew with the brick, but I've got too many uh, 
joints in there so I'm going to do it again I'm going to right click here and then bring my mouse over on this joint click on it and it took that joint out so that's pretty good to me so I'll click OK to exit the clone tool now I want to get rid of this plant by using the grass and the street so again I'll go back into the clone tool I'll right click here and then all I have to do is match up my uh, drawing tool with that area and you can see as I drag it across here it's bringing grass across over to the brick to erase this plant. Now I want to do the same thing with the street again I'll just cl click here and drag the street across. Looks pretty good to me so far. Let's zoom out by pressing F9 and as you can see you could never tell that that plant was there. Well, the wall's a little crooked here but you get the point. So we'll click OK to exit the clone tool. Now at this point you may want to save your image. You've brightened it up, you've cleaned it up, now you want it as a separate picture in case you do something to mess it up you can always go back to this point. So to save it we'll go here to file, click on save as and we want to save this as a JPEG file. So we'll go to JPEG here and I'm going to call this Nightlight Tutorial 1. And we'll click Save. And now this picture is saved with these changes.